Okay, Lakers, and this one we're going to learn how to use a tremendously useful idea of a new way to dimension, a new way to constrain an object called a parametric constraints. Under the Manage tab, there is this thing referred to as a parameter, and it gives us sort of this f of x math looking thing. We're going to take a look at that today. So the first thing, we're, we're dealing with parametric constraints. Uh, what is a parameter in the first place? So I'm just going to Google it real quick, see what it says. And I like the mathematical one, and we'll see what I mean by it in a moment. It says, a quantity whose value is expressed for the particular circumstances and in a relation to which other variable quantities may be expressed. So I have one quantity, and then I can express other quantities in terms of it is what it's saying. Let me show you where this might be useful. So I have here a real simple box. I made this pretty simply, and I know every single one of you in this class could render this too if given the dimensions. But let's say it's a part that's going to be built, and it may need to be sized up or it may need to be sized down. How, how is there a way that we can do this instead of having to rebuild the entire box with new dimensions? And the answer is yes, and that's what parametric constraints are. So in the Manage tab after it's built, I'll show you what I, what I mean. The parameter that we've defined here is the length. So if I look at here, the length in inches is 5 inches. Everything else is based on that. So we'll notice that we have some different parameters, the length divided by 2, 80% uh, of the length, 0.8, the length divided by 2 times 80%, and I'm going to show you how to do this with the cams. But these are our parameters, and they're based on the length. Let me just show you why that's important. Let's say all of a sudden that your boss says, no, in fact, the measurement that I mentioned was wrong. It's not supposed to be 5. It's supposed to be 10. I change this one number, hit done, and the box increases in size proportionally. And again, it it's the same box, it's just scaled up. And then the boss comes back and goes, no, they told us the wrong numbers again. We need to change that. It's actually supposed to be 15. I change that one parameter, and everything else changes in relationship to it. This will be important because we're going to start dealing uh, with our automata boxes again. And the cams may very uh, often need to be adjusted in order to get the motion that we desire or the motion that we're expecting. So imagine how cumbersome it's going to be is if all of a sudden we have to make and 3D print a new cam uh, in order for it to achieve uh, the motion that we want. So we can use parameters. And again, this is a hexagon cam, and I'll show you my parameters. What was put in here is I, I set a parameter called max distance, and I set it at 1. And everything else is a relationship uh, from max distance. So all I have to do is change max distance to maybe 2. And it makes that one larger. That's a simple one to do. Here's a eccentric cam. And again, if I look at the way I've done this with parameters, I d define something called diameter. And then you'll see there's diameter divided by 4. And we have uh, parameterized that in terms of the diameter. And again, I can change, uh, change that value. So let's practice using parameters to make uh, these cams. I'll do the most difficult one with you, which would be the snail cam. You'll notice that the way that these are dimensioned, they're parameterized based on nominal diameters or diameters. That's what D is. So when we say that this piece of a circle has a radius of 1 half D, and this is some distance uh, between center points of a circle of half D, they're talking about the diameter being the parameter for which all of these are created. So let's do the snail cam. So I'm going to pull up a new part. I already have one. I made one for you to make sure I know how to do it. And I'll pull one up. Start the sketch. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at that. I'm going to make the, the hole. I'm going to center everything. The hole should be 3 sixteenths of an inch. Now, right away, I'm looking that dia It's giving me a radius. I need the diameter. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to say, no, let's make this the diameter. Let's do 3 sixteenths. There's a starting point there. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Manage, and I'm going to set a few parameters. I'm going to say Add Numeric. So I'm going to set one, and I'm going to call this uh, Diameter. And I'm just going to call it Dia. 
I'm going to say, yeah, well, it's going to be in inches. And then we're just, it automatically sets it at one, but we can change this to whatever value we want in the future. I'm going to actually set it at two just so it's bigger than the hole that we made. And we'll hit done. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a couple other parameters too. And the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to do a parameter called large radius. So I'll do LR inches. And again, I'm going to look at my drawing. The large radius, which is right here, right from here to this part of the circle, is half the diameter. So this is the way I'm going to parameterize it. I'm going to say, instead of putting a number here, I'm going to put an equation. So I'm going to say it's dia divided by 2, done. Hit another one and set it up. Add numeric. I'm going to call this one small radius. And again, this is going to be, let's look at the plan. The small radius here for this part of the circle is the diameter, one-fourth of the diameter. So we're going to do that. Dia divided by 4. So again, I've parameterized my little rate, my large and small rate I versus, uh, based on the diameter. We'll do done. So I'm going to go ahead then and watch what I can do. Go back to sketch, and I'm going to make a circle. I'm going to do construction to begin with. Pull that out. It's giving me diameter, and I want this to be the radius. So again, I'm going to select it and change it to radius. And now I want to select it. And what did I call this? Let's make this the large radius. I called it LR. And it's giving me what that function is. That's the large radius, which is supposed to be half of the diameter. And we'll do another one here. Pull it out here, and again, I'm going to call this one small radius, SR, which is what I defined. Oops. Let's try that again. I need to set the small one, and I have forgotten what I defined it is. I'll show you what I can do. I want to set the small one here. I'm going to go ahead and start. To, I know I started it with something S. I can go here and say, what, what were my parameters? List parameters, small is what I want, that one. And then I has that extra S. I want to get rid of that. There it is. It's giving me two circles that are prescribed by that parameter. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get out of there. We're going to start placing a few points to parameterize uh, how we're going to make that curve of the snail cam. And the first thing I will do is I'm going to get out of construction. We're going to snap just a line here for that vertical part. That's fine. And I'm going to take couple points and put them roughly here, here, and here. And again, we have to dimension these. we got to know where those points are. We have to have them fixed. Uh, so you can imagine we're going to have this curve going through these points to define our snail cam. So what we're going to think about is, that, and I've, stuff I've looked at before says, if we take the difference between these radii right here, and we make this one 75% uh, out from here, 75% of that difference out, this one 50 and that one 25%, we can make a decent smooth cam. So let's set those parameters up. I'm going to go back to manage, parameters, and then add numeric. And we're talking about a point, so I'm just going to call this P1 for point 1. It's going to be in inches. And again, now I'm going to make an equation for it. And this one, you can reason it out. But we're going to take uh, the difference between the radii, so large radius minus small radius. And I want to put this first one out 75% of that difference. So I'm going to multiply that, and I might need some brackets here. Do that function first times 0 0.75, 75%, and I'm going to close that off to. I'm going to add to it then your small radius, which is called SM. And again, I keep calling it SR. It's not SR, it's SM. That's what I titled it. So we'll hit done. And watch what I can do then. I'm going to go back to sketch and I'm going to dimension this point to that point and I'm going to call it P1. And it came out real close to be placing it correctly. So I'm going to take the next one and I'm going to just imagine 
go to manage parameters and we'll do both of the next ones at the same time p2 and then i'm going to just copy this equation and paste it in there and change 75 to 50 and i hit done i'm going to go back to parameters add my last one p3 delete that, paste the equation, and change this one to 25. All right. Done. So now we're going to dimension those locations of those points. Parameters. Whoop, I don't want to go back to parameter. I want to go to sketch. Dimension. Center point here. And this we called P2. P2. Center point here, and this we called P3. You see that moved them slightly. I kind of had them approximated in the first place. So they're all moved there, but they're parameterized now. So the last thing I want to do is I want to finish off the, the shape of my snail cam, and we'll do that with a spline interpolation, and we'll go from here to here to here to here to here. Okay, kind of a crazy working uh, cam. These are tangent lines on there that show up there. Let's make them tangent. So when select here, there, this line, that one. That's a pretty good looking snail cam. And then the last thing I'm going to do is extrude it. And the extruding depth on our diagram says it's 3 16 inch. This one we won't parameterize because it will always be 3 16 I'll select this profile, and there we are. Now, again, what's so special about this is what happens if we need to change it. We want to have a different motion for our follower and the thing that's on top of the autonomous box. I can now go into Manage Parameters and say, well, you know what? I don't want this thing to have a nominal diameter of 2. I want it to be 4. I want it to be bigger. And I hit Done and it automatically scales that up. So it's much easier to adjust and make adjustments if you parameterize your dimensions rather than have them set and have to go back and redesign the whole thing. So that's the snail cam. Uh, you go ahead and use the dimensions that I've given you on this and try to parameterize, create parameterized uh, cams that are easily adjustable for the pair, the eccentric, and the hexagon cam. All right, go ahead and get to work.